Hello and welcome to today's video. Uh, my name's Joe, the CRM chap, uh, and we're here again with our series all about Microsoft Exam PL600. This is the Solution Architect Exam for those who are building or developing solutions on top of the Power Platform. So the focus of our time together today is going to be on how we can create and use uh, an application registration in Microsoft Azure. Now, an obvious question emerged at this point, well, why might we want to do this in the, in the first place? Well, typically, when we're wanting to do any form of integration, maybe a server-to-server -server based integration where we're not actually using a physical user account in the system, an application registration is going to give us that m m primary and modern mechanism through which we can authenticate into the Dataverse platform uh, using OAuth 2. Uh, and we can use the resulting application registration either to go into the application and impersonate a particular user uh, or indeed to use it as part of an application user instead. Um, and we're going to show you how you can use it in both ways as part of the video today. But the aim of the video, first of all, is to talk you through the steps in terms of how you can set up an application registration, first of all, which will be the, uh, the main thing that you need to uh, before we can even think about doing those two things. So we start off first of all within the uh, Azure Active Directory portal, aad.portal.azure.com. And what we want to do first of all is navigate across into Azure Active Directory over here. And what we'll see is we've got an option down here for app registrations. And what we can do on here is click on new registration. I'm going to create a brand new application registration. We're just going to call this my PL600 demo. Uh, we're going to leave this option ticked here where it's just going to be only for accounts in this organizational directory. Uh, redirect URI, we typically would either want to leave blank or uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we just want to put in something like uh, HTTP uh, localhost instead. With that defined, uh, actually no, we actually first of all need to select web over there and then yeah, we're all good. Then we can click on register at the bottom. It will take a few moments to create this. And then on this screen here, we'll start to we'll see that the application registration has been created. Now at this stage, there's one important detail or two important details that we want to grab on here. Uh, the application client ID, which I'm just going to take a copy of and just save onto my other screen so we can refer back to it in a short while. Then also the directory or tenant ID. So again, just pop those onto my other screen like so. In order for us to use this application registration in the way that we intend, we need to navigate down to manifest and just make just a slight tweak to the, uh, to the JSON over here. Uh, specifically, there's a property on here, allow public client, that we just want to update to true. So we can just go in and just overwrite the JSON like so, click on the save button, and our manifest has been updated. In order for our application registration to access the Dataverse platform, we need to add on the relevant API permissions first. Uh, and there's really just only one permission that we need, the ability to impersonate a particular user. So I'm going to click on add a permission over here. Uh, we're going to search down here and we'll find that the option is underneath uh, dynamic CRM. The uh, reason this be a reason that it's under this is because originally this was or well, the data first platform is inherited from dynamic CRM so a lot of the stuff that we still uh, refer to underneath the hood may have these odd references to the older application what we can see down here is that we've got a permission access to common data service which is the former name for Microsoft Dataverse as an organization user we just want to tick the box there to add the permission on uh, we need to just grant the admin consent for this particular permission uh, because I'm already a global admin on this tenant, uh, I can do this myself, but it might be that you need to liaise with the appropriate individuals in the organization to be able to um, to be able to sort of uh, grant this permission. And the final thing that we're going to need to generate is a secret. Um, so we want to click on certificate and secret over here, click on new client secret. Um, I'll just set the default expiry um, or set the expiry to the default value of six months like so. Click on add. And then we can see there's my secret value down here. Now it's really important at this point that I grab this and I save this somewhere secure uh, because what will happen uh, if we just uh, have a look now is if I navigate away from this page and then back onto it um, or indeed refresh the browser more correctly, we'll notice that the value is now scrambled. Um, so it's really important that we grab it, uh, save it down somewhere secure uh, so we don't lose it at all in the future. So those steps take us through the prerequisites that we need to set up an application registration. So let's move on now and show you some of the two different ways in which we can then use this uh, to get into the Dataverse platform. The first way we can use our application registration is to contact the web API 
uh, and perform operations as our user account. And this is done via impersonation. Now, there's a couple of things that we'll need in addition uh, as part of the application registration before we can do this. Um, so the main thing that we need to do is make sure that on the manifest, we've updated the option down here, OAuth to allow implicit flow and set this to true like so. Um, what we'll also need to make sure that we do as well is get the uh, navigate onto the overview tab, click onto endpoints, and we want to grab the first uh, URL that we can see here, OAuth 2, 2.0 authorization endpoint version 2. With those details uh, saved and with them available to us, uh, in Postman what we can then do is set up a new request. So in this case, I'm just going to do a very simple who am I request uh, against the application uh, to return some details about the user account that we're performing operations as and the key details that we need to configure on the authorization tab. So we want to set it up with a uh, authorization of type OAuth 2.0. The grant type is going to be implicit. Uh, we put in that local host callback URL that we mentioned before. We can see here there's the auth URL that we copied from the Azure portal, uh, our client ID that we saved from earlier. And then we're also going to need to have the scope, um, which will effectively just be the URL of our Dataverse environment uh, with a slash at the end and then dot default like so. Uh, with all of that populated, we can then click on the button there to say get new access token. On the browser tab, it's opened up a modern authentication prompt, which I've just accepted. Uh, and we can see that I've now got my new OAuth, talk, OAuth 2 token that I can use here. When I fire off this request then, we should then get a response back. If I navigate down here and just expand this up, we can see we get some details down here um, about the current user making the requests. I can then confirm this is working as, by, as expected by checking to ensure that the user ID there matches against what my own user ID uh, appears as uh, when I navigate into my Dataverse environment. And the simplest way of doing this is by opening up the user record and we can see at the top up here we've got the ID which matches exactly against what we've just seen uh, in Postman. Now the second and perhaps most, the most common mechanism that we would use, particularly for any sort of integrations uh, when we're connecting to the Dataverse platform, would be by the client ID and secret route uh, instead. So what we can see at the top up here, we've got an example request, um, uh, which effectively is pretty much the same as what we just saw a second ago. So we're contacting the exact same URL. Uh, the only difference down here is that we're instead using grant type of client credentials. Um, we are prompted then to provide our client secret value, which we can see down there and the rest of the settings are just fine like so. Um, so this is all looking okay from a Postman standpoint, but we do actually need to uh, do an extra step in the Dataverse environment. We need to set up our application user uh, that we're going to be using. So to do that, it's really straightforward. All we need to do is just navigate into the Power Platform Admin Center, click on Settings at the top, navigate down to Application Users. We can see there's no current application user set up in this particular environment, so let's go ahead and set one up from scratch. Uh, we can click onto the add an app button and what this will do is actually go through and find all of the application registrations that it can find on the tenant and there we can see there's our PL600 demo um, app reg that we set up from before. So I'm just going to add this into the root business unit and just to make sure it can do whatever it wants I'm just going to grab this the security administrator role like so. Click on the create button. and After a few moments we'll see that this will then uh, add this into the system. Uh, as a brand new sort of user account uh, and we can this is now ready to go for us to test from within Postman. So we can navigate back down into Postman now. Uh, there's just one final detail that we just need to enter which is the access token URL. Um, so what we can do is navigate back onto the uh, onto the Azure portal and we should see that on our list on here we'll have an appropriate sort of endpoint that we can select from the list here. So in this case it's going to be the endpoint ending in token down here. Uh, we always want to make sure that we're using the version 2 endpoint where possible. So let's paste that into there like so. And now what we can do is we can scroll down to the bottom, click on get new access token. It's going to generate that for us. Uh, hit the proceed button then click on use token. And then if we send that request like so, we'll get pretty much the same sort of response back. But we'll notice that the main difference is that the user ID value is completely different. Uh, this will now sort of resolve back to the application user um, account that's been created instead. Uh, so therefore we'll be performing operations as that account instead uh, when we're targeting the platform. So as I say, the application user route with the client ID and secret, this will be the most typical option that we that we do use. However, if we are wanting to do some testing with the web API, you know, typically as a solution architect, we wanted to poke around and just figure out how we can you know, perform a particular integration. It's possible that going down the impersonation route will also be um, 
you know, a, a an option that we need to do, particularly if you're wanting to work with records that maybe we own or in the context of maybe a user with specific privileges. Uh, using the impersonation route, we can test that and make sure that our requests will work when we actually move forward with our integration. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video today, all about how we can work with application registrations in the Dataverse platform. Um, so I hope you found this video useful as part of your revision for the PL600 exam. Uh, please do like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. It would be great to have you along for the ride uh, as we continue this series and um, you know look at other uh, exam topics in the future. Um, so all it leaves me to say is uh, thanks again and hope you have a great day ahead. Cheers.